I'd like to bring up the panel and our um, next uh, moderator, Julie Parsnet, and her panelists in the front of the room. And we'll try and make up a bit of time if possible. Make Just going to ask all the speakers if they would mind to come forward so, and uh, sit up here at the tables. It'll just be easier as we go along. Um, so, um, uh, Dr. Harley and Nagler, if you could come up also. Um, my name is Julie Parsonette. I'm a professor of medicine and health research and policy at Stanford University. And I've spent pretty much my entire career studying infections as a cause of non communicable disease, uh, specifically working mostly on Helicobacter pylori. Um, this session that we're having now is going to be uh, two series of case studies, and they're sort of the inverse of each other. The first series is going to be um, really some incredibly innovative ideas and uh, research about infections that are causing non-communicable disease, and uh, the reverse in the second series, which is going to be more how these non-communicable diseases are impacting and affecting um, how infectious diseases appear, um, their outcomes and their epidemiology. Um, so with respect to this first part, part A, which is going to be looking at uh, infections as a cause of non-communicable disease, um, again, this is something that I've re researched for a lot of my career. And I just want to mention Helicobacter for one second. Um, as all of you, I'm sure, know, Helicobacter was discovered in the 1980s by Barry Marshall in, um, and uh, Robin Warren in Australia. And when they made that discovery, um, they were told it couldn't possibly cause ulcer disease. These bacteria couldn't cause ulcer disease because that's not what bacteria did, OK? That was the whole argument against it. It was, wasn't compatible with the way people thought about things. But we've learned a lot since then. And H. pylori has now been definitely a cause of gastric ulcers, duodenal ulcers, gastric cancer, gastric lymphoma. It's linked very closely to iron deficiency anemia, immune thrombocytopenia and has been seen to be a protective factor in gastroesophageal reflux disease, uh, gastroesophageal adenocarcinoma, maybe tuberculosis, and maybe diarrhea, OK? So this is one of the many thousands of bugs that live in the human body. And we've discovered a lot about it because it's in a fairly clean environment. And we've been able to look at it without having all the other competing organisms. So we've been hearing about this complexity of human uh, ex uh, experience. There is also an enormous complexity of microbial experience. And what we're going to be hearing now is a little bit of dissection of some of that microbial uh, exposure. So we're going to have three speakers. Um, uh, Casey Lynch, who is from uh, Cortexime, and she's going to be talking about Porphyromonas gingivalis and its association with Alzheimer's disease. It's fantastically interesting stuff. Uh, John Harley will be talking about uh, Epstein-Barr virus and autoimmune diseases. Again, this is state of the art, really right off you know, the bench. And uh, Catherine Nagler will be talking about the role of the microbiome in food allergies and something that's very dear to my heart because I also work a bit on food allergy. So um, thank you very much. Our first speaker is going to be uh, uh, Casey Lynch. She is the C CEO and co-founder of Cortexime uh, Inc., which is a company that's developing uh, therapeutics uh, for Alzheimer's and other neurodegenerative diseases. She's worked in disease research and drug discovery for neurodegenerative diseases for quite a while, and I'm really excited to hear your talk. 